So I got this question the other day from one of my subscribers asking, how can I get involved or invest in real estate with as little as a thousand dollars? Well, I'm here to tell you there's ways that you can do it. The first way is REITs. These are real estate investment trusts. And I'm going to show you here on my screen the top REITs for February coming up. So it's the end of January right now. Uh, the top REITs, um, Real Estate Investment Trust for February of 2021, uh, BPYU, ticker symbol BDN, and ticker symbol CSGP. So now how this works is real estate investment trusts are publicly traded companies that allow indiv individual investors to buy shares in real estate or their portfolios and receive a yield, like a dividend payout. So you can earn anywhere between six and 10% on average. I've heard some as high as 12%, but real estate investment trusts are great because these are publicly traded. These are big companies. These are trusted institutions. They're regulated. Um, yes, like anything, there is a risk, but these trusts typically uh, invest in commercial real estate. They do do multifamily, uh, single family homes as well. Typically it's a commercial thing. Now, the second thing that you can use your thousand dollars for is the private funds. Now, private funds, uh, I personally um, invest with Fundrise. It's a uh, real estate investment trust as well. They focus a lot on large apartment buildings or apartment complexes. They focus a lot on commercial. Now, what's great about Fundrise, and I'll click on how it works, and this is not an endorsement to Fundrise. Uh, there are other companies out here. There's Streetwise. There's a there's a couple private private equity companies. Now they also manage debt, so you can you can in their program you can invest as little as a as five hundred dollars to open up an account, and it shows that you're you know I actually have a video um, on my channel. I'll put a link up here right now to that video. Kind of goes over my investment strategies with Fundrise and how how it works and you know exactly how this com company is structured. What's great about Fundrise and other private equity real estate investment trusts is they pay usually a quarterly div dividend, excuse me, a quarterly dividend uh, anywhere between 8 and 12% per quarter. So let's say you invested your $1,000 in an equity investment. That $1,000 every quarter is going to earn between $80 and $120, and that's every single quarter. So imagine you're not doing it. You're not the boots on the ground. You're not the person going to the job site. You're not managing anything. You're literally taking your funds. You're putting those funds into uh, something like a fund rise or a real estate investment trust. That money then becomes working for you. What's cool about dividend earning uh, real estate investment trusts is, one, you could take that quarterly pay payout so you could receive that as a profit. Now, you are that is taxable income if you take it. But another strategy is to take that dividend, uh, let's say that same $1,000, you can take that $80 to $100, $120 investment or uh, dividend that was paid out to you, and you can do what's called a dividend reinvestment. So now let's say it's the 120 You'll now have the 1,000 plus the 120 back into your real estate investment trust. So now your eight to 12 percent is going to be earning a higher dividend because you now have more capital invested. If you do the dividend reinvestment, of course, that's not taxable income because you're continuing to roll that back into it. The third way that you can take as little as a thousand dollars and get involved in real estate, investing in real estate, is to set up what I would call like your private not private, your your own personal management company. So if you start going to some of your real estate meetups, some of your local investor meetups, there's a lot of um, Facebook groups that you'll meet other investors. And then you'd be offering your services as a potential investor with them. You could be offering them the service of you managing the project, of you managing the contractors, or even better, the investor that's looking for someone to be their management company on a rental portfolio, right? So imagine you're just going to set up basic marketing materials, um, whether it be a brochure or just a, even a business card, and you get out there and start networking and working with the investment community. There's a lot of investors that do not want to manage the day-to-day -day operations of their real estate portfolio. You now would provide that service to them. The fourth way to invest as little as $1,000 in real estate 
is going to be tax liens. Now, every state is different. Last I checked, I believe 26 states within the United States allow a private investor to buy a tax lien. What a tax lien basically is, every person who owns a piece of real estate has annual property taxes. When those taxes don't get paid, the state, state or municipality that that property is in will put a tax lien against it. But the key here is, is the, the, the municipality that puts the lien against it, they don't really want the lien. They don't want to, they don't want to take possession of the property. They want the money. So they allow us as investors to go to an auction. It's usually once a year, depends from state to state how they operate. You typically have to register for these in advance. And it's usually months in advance that you have to register. But you can buy these tax liens. I don't want to say pennies on the dollar because that's not the right phrase, but it's going to be for fractions of the value. And then you'll be able to and assign an interest rate of which the person who owns that property, who's delinquent on their taxes, will now make payments. Uh, ch check this out. Up to four years. Now, that depends from state to state. I'm not offering you know, legal advice on this. You have to do your own research in your own municipality to make sure what is allowed and not allowed. But I know in certain states, the interest that you can charge on that lien that you purchase, anywhere between 12 and 30 percent. I've seen guys earn as much as 26 percent owning this tax lien with those payments concurring for up to up to four years. So it's great. It's a great way to do it. And then the fifth way that you can get involved investing in real estate with as little as a thousand dollars is to become what's called a wholesaler or a bird dog. So now you can take your money, invest in signage or marketing materials, whatever it may be, and maybe you don't even have to. Maybe you start doing what we call driving for dollars. You're now looking for a distressed property. You do your own research to come up and find out who the owner of that property is. You reach out to the owner, you find out their situation, you figure out what pain levels they might be experiencing. It might be a deceased relative. This person who now manages uh, their estate really just wants to get rid of it. They don't have money to invest in it. And they're looking for someone just like you to help them alleviate that pain of holding on to this real estate. What you can then in turn do is use those funds as a earnest money deposit, right? A EMD, an earnest money deposit to now write a purchase and sale agreement with the owner. You as the buyer, you can actually set a term, let's say between today and 30 days that you will close or today and 60 days that you can close as far as closing on the property. But here's the trick. You've now met all of these other investors because you've been trying these other strategies with how you can get involved with real estate for as little as $1,000. You've now met these investors. So now you have this, this contract on a house. You've used your money. You've sent your earnest money uh, to the title company. You're now ready to purchase the house in whatever time frame you and the seller agreed to. You can now shop this deal to an investor, to an investor like myself. So let's give you a quick example. Dilapidated property, the current owner agrees to sell it to you for $100,000, right? $100,000. You now come to uh, an investor and you now show them the property. You let them know you have it under contract and you are going to sell it to this investor for $110,000. That investor is going to go do his or her due diligence. They're going to research that after whatever renovation is needed to bring this property back into a, a sellable condition would probably, let's say, probably sell for 200 on the retail. So now that, that investor is going to pay you the one, in a sense, pay you the 110. Your agreement with the original seller, you're going to pay them out the 100000 You've now turned your $1,000 earnest money deposit into a $10,000 return. The investor that you're wholesaling this property to is happy because depending on their renovation, they can see upwards, let's say upwards of a $90,000 profit. Of course, not a whole 90, but think about it in this ways, that <clears throat> not having the money is not really the problem. Not having the tools, the education, the different options of what you can do in real estate with just as little as $1,000 is what you need to start looking at. So guys, I really appreciate it. Do me a favor, 
If this content has provided you some value, man, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe below to the channel. I'll be posting more content very similar to this. Check out my entire YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Chris Birch 202 and I'll talk to you guys soon.